No corn's going somewhere. We're not, we're not going to sit still. We're not, we're not sitting still. Amen. God told Joshua, think about this. Everywhere your feet, think about this, has walked, shall increase, and your inheritance, I, and, and listen, he said, so everywhere your feet steps, you're going to have increase and an inheritance. Increase and an inheritance. We do not serve a broke God. Quit living like it. He's a good God. He's a good father. He loves his children. And if a God loves his children, God says, I'll, I'll bless you with an inheritance. Listen, I want to bless that over your life right now. That every, this year, 2018, y'all think about this. Wherever your feet trod, wherever your feet step, two things is going to happen. Increase and inheritance. Y'all receive it? Y'all receive it? Increase and inheritance. So wherever your feet steps this year, I want you to think about it. Increase, inheritance, increase, inheritance. And if he said that to Joshua, and he's no respecter of person, he'll do it for me and you. Amen? So I'm, I'm excited about that. Let me preach this for a moment. God loves us. He, he loves us as his children. And I'm going to show you today, how do you receive your inheritance? Because we got a lot of Christians living broke spiritually. you got a lot of spiritually bankrupt Christians. They're living a spiritual bankrupt life. And God says, I will never. He says, my seed will never have to beg for bread. You'll never have to beg for nothing. And God says, I'll meet and supply all your needs. Not your greeds, but your needs. I'll meet and supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And how many of y'all know that we don't got paved, paved streets in heaven? We've got streets of gold in heaven. Yeah, we got pearly great gates and crystal seas, amen? So listen, we, we serve a God that loves us. So how do we live an inside-out life? Let me show you real quick. The Bible says, if you're a note-taker, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. I read this to you last week, and I couldn't get it out of my spirit this week, so I'm going to give it to you again. 1 Samuel 16, 7, listen to what it says. For man looks at the outer appearance, but the Lord looks at what? Uh -uh. Man looks at the outer appearance, but God looks at what? The heart. The heart. God wants to know, did you, are you worshiping him with your heart today? Anybody can stand there and do this right here. But what's your heart? Is your heart bowing or is your heart praising? Oh, see, that's what it says, Psalms 103, verse 1. The Bible says, bless the Lord, O my soul. What is your soul? It is your mind, your will, and your emotions. God says, you, be you bless me with all your mind, all your will, and every bit of the emotions that you have in me. So somebody may be sitting beside you this morning with a tear coming down their face. Watch this. That's okay. That's okay. He said, you bless me with all of your soul and all that is within my heart. Bless his holy name. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to twist it up just a little bit here. Mark chapter 4, where I'm going to be taking my core text at here today. Mark chapter 4. Verse 14 through 20. I'm excited about this. How many of y'all are excited to be at church today? I mean, I really am. I'm excited about this. Because, listen, the Word of God will not come back void. The Word of God is powerful than any two-edged sword. It cuts, it divides the spirit from the soul down to the very bone marrow. The Bible is active and it's, it's alive. So it's not dead. So Mark chapter 4, verse 14 through 20. Now, listen, let me preface this just a little bit, okay? We're going to be talking about the heart today. We're going to be talking about your heart, the, the real you, the real you that's on the inside of you right now. Because listen to me very carefully. The real you is on the inside of you. That's right. The real you is on the inside of you. So Mark chapter 4, verse 14 through 20 says these words. The sower sows the word. I love this. And these are the ones by the wayside. Everybody say wayside. Come on, everybody say wayside. This is where the word, the seed, is sown. Watch what it says. When they hear, watch what Satan does. It's very important y'all get this. Because listen, right now, somebody right now may have a wayside heart. And you're sitting here, and you can't hear what God's doing. You, you can't feel what God's doing. And right now, God's word is going forward. And listen, my question to you is this. Can you receive this seed? Because if not, look at what it says. As soon as the seed, the word, is sown, when they hear it, Satan comes immediately. He does not wait for us to dismiss church to come get the seed. He gets it right now. 
So some of you are sitting under my teaching right now. You don't hear God? You can't hear God? And so this word's for you. He says, as soon as the word goes forth, soon as they start hearing the seed of the Holy Bible, Satan comes immediately, watch what happens, Jared, and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones on the stony ground. Everybody say stony ground. Yeah, here, here it is. When they hear the word, listen to this, immediately receive it with gladness. In other words, I'm so excited to be at church today. I cannot wait to get to church today. They receive it with joy. They're happy to be at church. They want to be at church, but watch this what happens. And they have no root. They have no root, Bobby. They have no root in themselves. Watch this. And so endure only for time. Here answers some of y'all's questions. How come people get on fire and then they lose it? They ain't got no root. They ain't got no root. How come they serve God for six months or a year and all of a sudden they're high one day and they're low the next day? They ain't got no root. They're a stony Christian. I didn't say stoned out. I said stony. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. They have no root in themselves. And so endure only for a time, only for a season. They're here today at church. They're faithful for six months. And all of a sudden, you never see them again. Do you know, you know what that is? That's a stony Christian. Watch out. Boy, it's a pretty good preaching here today. I ain't even got to it yet. This is afterward. Listen to this. When tribulation or persecution or persecution. How many of you know, if you are a child of God, you might as well roll your sleeves up. Throw them shoulders back. Hold your head up because watch this. Persecution will come. It will come. All, all the disciples had to die a crucial death. Welcome to Christianity. Welcome to Christianity. Watch this. When persecution arises for the word's sake, for the word's sake, the Bible. So God's saying the reason why people are getting persecuted is because they're taking a stand on the word of God. Hallelujah. Immediately they lose heart. They give up. They quit. They stop. They stumble. Verse 18. Now these are the ones sown on thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness and riches, and the desires for other things. Oh my God, did I just say that? The desire for other things. The desire for other things trumps what this is. The thorny Christians are the ones that says, you know what, I'll, I'll make up for it next week. A church will be next week. Let me go out and do the activities of the world. Oh, it's going to be good in here today. Let, let me go out and do the activities of the world. Let, let, me, let me hang out with the world a little bit. But God, I know you're always never, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. God, you'll always be there. I love you, God, but I love softball more. I love you, God, but I love work more. I love you, God, but I like money a lot. Oh, come on. Am I at the right church here today? He says these words, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of the riches, of the riches, of the riches, and the desires for other things <laughs> entering and choke out. I know Jesus, but boy, it's choking me right now. I know they're telling me truth. And if you're mad at me right now, the word, listen, the enemy is choking the word out of you right now. God is trying to penetrate. God is trying to bless you. But something's going on inside of you. And listen, there's got to come a time in your life and in my life that we got to stop and do a heart check. we got to stop and say, you know what, is this really eternal in my life? Does this really matter in my life? I'm allowing people to, to rob the oil of God out of my life. And listen, we got to do a heart check today. You're okay? Hallelujah. Listen, it says, if they're, they're about the other things of the world, and it chokes out the world, and listen, and it becomes unfruitful. Oh, you're here, but, but you don't have no fruit in your life. You don't have no fruit in your life. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Everybody say good ground. I love this. Good ground. Here's the, here's the steps. You ready? Good ground. You've got to have good soul. You've got to have a good heart. Those who hear the word, watch this now, comma, <laughs> accept it, come on, comma, and bear fruit. So God's saying, if you've got good soul in your heart, 
You just don't hear it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. He says, you accept it. You receive it. And then once you, watch this, is so good. Once you receive the word of God in good soul, a good heart, he says, you're going to produce a harvest that the devil can't even stop. Y'all getting the word today? Getting the job of it? So listen to him. This is good. God compares our hearts as soul. It's crazy. I, a farmer. Today we're going to be some farmers. Hallelujah. And God says his word, the Bible, is like a seed. The Bible is like seeds, y'all hear me? And the only way we'll ever have a harvest, how many of y'all want a harvest? How many of y'all want increase in your life? How many of y'all want to make a difference in this life? You only may have 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, but if you want to make an increase in your life and in somebody else's life, you've got to have a good heart. You've got to have good soul. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm almost, I, I, I wrote this down. This really has been sticking in my heart. But the Bible was really a bag of seeds. <laughs> that Bible that you are holding in your hand is a bag of seeds. It's a bag of seeds. And listen, if the seeds just stay in the bag, y'all help me, Jenna. If the seeds just stay in the bag, and if they don't ever get sown, no harvest can be expected or experienced in your life. You can know all the Bible you want, but if you don't plant seeds, you'll never have a harvest in your life. Hallelujah. Here's what I've learned over the years in ministry. Faith does come by hearing, hearing the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse, verse 17. But listen to me very carefully. This right here is going to mess some of y'all up because this is truth. But if the person that you have been talking to is unwilling to listen or receive the word of God, you are wasting your seeds. That's true. My, they won't ever listen to me. You know why? Because either they're a wayside Christian, a, a stony Christian, or a thorny Christian. That's just the way it is. And listen, you can preach. Listen, I'm up here right now preaching the word of God. There are some people, I'm telling you, being honest with God's truth, they can sit through an anointed church service, they can sit through anointed singing, and they'll sit there and they'll walk out the same way they walked in. If that's your case, shame on Christianity because the Word of God is good, it's active, and it's still sharp. And if you give God an ear, He'll take advantage of that. Woo! I had a mama that called me one day, and this, this is when my ministry shifted, it changed. Because I was going out making calls and this, that, and the other, house visit and all that stuff, going to the jails. And this mama called me, Courtney, and she said, will you go visit my child? And I said, yes, ma'am, I'll go visit your child. I'd be glad to. I walked into the jail cell right down here. And, dude, I done thought I ran into the Antichrist. He didn't want me there, Perry. He didn't want me there, Willie. He seen my face, and he started screaming, Get him away from me. Get him away from me. And I said, they're going, boy, this is going to be good. I learned a valuable lesson. If they don't want you there, if they're unwilling to hear the word of God and receive the word of God, you're wasting your time. Just like I'm preaching really good right now. If somebody comes to this altar to be healed, but they don't believe in healing, you're wasting your time. If somebody comes up and says, I'll pray for me, but they are disobeying the word of God, you are wasting your time. You're wasting your oil. You're wasting your time. You want people who's got good soul in their life. They're sitting there willing. Listen, here's what I've noticed. Everybody can be completely healed today if you want it. That's exactly right. You don't have to have hatred in your life. You don't, have to have, you don't have to have jealousy in your life. You don't have to have nothing in your life. I'm telling you, but Jesus Christ, you and God make the majority. Hallelujah. You can have it. Most people never receive it. They know right. They know wrong. But their heart, their soul is not receptive in receiving the word of God. Come on. I told you I was going to mess some of y'all up. Listen, if they don't want it, if they don't ask for it, here's what I've noticed. I've prayed over people. And I get, I'll, I'll say, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes. You believe you can be healed? I don't know. And, and, wrong answer. Wrong answer. Because you're in a house of worship today. I believe and I know when God shows up, the supernatural comes with him. 
You may walk in one way, but hallelujah, if you want it and you receive it, and I promise you, you can walk out a different man, a different woman, have a different marriage in your life. It's a mindset thing, guys. It really is. So let me get this real quick. I I, want to bless y'all. There are four types of souls that the Bible just talked about. Four types of hearts. Everybody say four. I'm going to try to get through this, all right? There are four types of hearts that are mentioned in the Bible right here. In people. Everybody right now has one of these hearts. Right now. I don't, you say, Brian, I'm good, I'm good. Well, after I preach this, you got to examine yourself. Let me get this word in your spirit. You chew on it for a while. You go back and read your notes, and you tell God, say, God, this is where I'm at. This is what's going on in my heart right now. The first heart that God speaks about here in Mark chapter 4 is the wayside heart. The wayside heart. And listen to me. you, you got to grab this. How many of y'all have ever been hiking or, or maybe walked some trails in your life? I did that once with Dana, and I'm not, I don't want to do it no more. She likes hiking and tr- doing all that trails and waterfalls. and Man, anyway, let me get to this. You're always normally on a trail, or if you're hiking, you'll see a path. And you'll see this path. No one ever gets off that path. You ever, you ever notice that? It's just like everything else is up and growing. It's beautiful, this, that, and the other. But you'll see one path that everybody has taken. And they walk the same path at the same time every day. They've walked it, and the dirt there is well-worn. I put well-worn. The dirt there, the soil is well-worn. Listen, the more people that walk on that path, the more what? Packed down it gets. It gets packed down. It gets packed down. You start, you keep walking on it. I'm telling you, it gets harder and harder and harder. It gets packed down. What God spoke into my spirit is that we've got way too many, hallelujah, wayside packed down Christians. These are the people, (laughs) Lord's going to help me today, that, that, that they walk the same way, the same path. It's their way or the highway. They have packed down ministry so much Listen to me very carefully. They're so tight. They're so packed down. We do three songs. We preach for 20 minutes. We give, we give an invitation. And if I'm not out by 11.55, you pack. You are a wayside. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I am, no, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not apologizing for the word of God no more. The Holy Spirit just corrected me in front of, I don't know how many people there, but he just corrected me. You say, Brian, that's how he works. That's how he works. If you have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, he'll correct you. Listen, you're at a Spirit-filled church, and you say, Brian, I don't like it. I'm a wayside. It's going to be three songs, four songs at the most. You're going, I'm talking 20 minutes. Y'all know me long. You listen. There's been times I've got up here behind this pulpit. And God switch it and change it. There's been times I've been sitting where you're at and God says, I want you to go pray for that person over on the left. There's been times in my ministry that God would wake me up at 2 o'clock in the morning and tell me to take this note down. There's been times that God's given me dreams and visions. There's been times that God says, Brian, you was mean to them. There's been times in my life that God has spoken to me through the Holy Spirit. And here you are here today. You're in a church service, and I'm telling you, you know one of the saddest things I've seen at Elkhorn Baptist Church? When it comes communion time, people leave. When we're getting ready to break the body of Jesus Christ. Now, if you've got to work, praise God, go to work, don't get fired. Go, go, be there. But if you're just leaving because you're packed down, it's wrong. And listen, maybe it's going to take a man of God like me to stand up and willing to be plowed the ground and say, this is what God says in his Bible. This is what God says in his Bible. Listen, church, listen, we've got to get hungry and thirsty for God again. It's more than showing up at church and saying, you know what, I put my time in. The devil does that every Sunday. But I'm telling you all in Jesus' name what your pastor is feeling. An inside-out year of increase. And you know what that's going to take? That's going to take everybody in this church willing to step into the river and say, God, wherever you want to take me, God, take me there. That's what it is. So you may be here here today. What is a packed-down wayside person? Here it is. You ready? You've lost your love. You lost your joy. You've lost your excitement. 
You don't throw no more seed down on no soil. One of the saddest things I've heard since I've been a pastor, I was talking to a man. He, he was drinking. And we finally got talking about Jesus. And God is bigger than alcohol. Listen, God is bigger than that. He told me, he said, I had a calling on my life. But because I had a past, the church wouldn't allow me to go any farther. And I said, dude, why don't you change churches? Won't you go to a place that welcomes sinners? Boy, that's a crazy concept, isn't it? Maybe that's the problem with churches today. All we got is vanilla churches and chocolate churches. I want, I want Rocky Road. I want some Baskin Robbins going on. Y'all know what I'm saying? I want some people to walk in that is absolutely a mess and God just touches them automatically and something starts shifting, something starts changing in their life. They may walk in a drunk, but they'll walk out. Oh, they'll be drunk on God. Hallelujah. If you're a guest here today, we do not apologize. Pack down, wayside, Christian. Pack down, wayside. The next one we'll talk to you about is a, a stony heart. It's tough. Because, man, it's so easy to get a stony heart. So easy. The stony heart people, listen to this, are those who have a cold, no feelings, no conscience. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to go where I want to go. I'm going to talk the way I want to talk. It don't matter. I am my own man. And I'm willing to take the consequence. You're in trouble. They don't care. They got a hard heart. See, you don't see much soil on stony ground. <laughs> this is where the stony hard, rocky heart people, they stop. Listen, they stop the seed. And, and they, they block the roots. They, the rocks block the roots from growing. Oh, they don't mind you having a little root. They don't want you to have deep root. This is where, listen to me very carefully, this is where your heart has become so hard, hard as stone. Hard as stone, you don't care. You're here, but you're really not here. You don't care. You've lost your love, your fire, your zeal, your passion for Jesus Christ, His church, His people. But I'm going to read something to you because I want to give you some hope in this, in this stony ground situation. I want you all to listen to what I'm getting ready to read to you because this is powerful. This is so powerful. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29. Hallelujah, that's right. Jeremiah 23, 29. This is so good. It said, is not my word, my seed, my Bible like a fire, declares the Lord. And like, watch this. And like a hammer, <laughs> like a hammer that breaks rock in pieces. He, he's, God said these words. I love this. I love this. He says, you might as well call me the hammer and not Daryl Isaac. Oh, he may be the heavy hammer, but I serve a God. If you walk into this church one way, he can start tapping and tapping and breaking and breaking and breaking. Does hammer start swinging? And you can say, my God, I feel it breaking off my life right now. See, we serve a God that will break that curse off your life. We serve a God that will break that depression off your life right now. We serve a God that will break that curse right now in Jesus' name. He'll break that curse in Jesus' name. Watch this, y'all read. I'm going to blow y'all's mind. He did some 2,000 years ago when he sent his son, Jesus Christ. The curse. Read your Bible. It says the curse was broken. So listen to me. You may be here today with a stony heart. A stony heart, hard as stone, hard as rock. Nothing moves you. Nothing. You sit in a service like this, stone cold. Looking, stone cold. Nothing suits you. Are y'all okay? Nothing suits you. And watch this. People know that you're stone cold. You pass them in the hallway in your stone cold. Nothing's good 
And if you're going to live an inside-out life, listen to me, you cannot have a stony heart. Listen, I know this is a tough word, but I've gave you a prescription, listen to me. In Jeremiah 23, 29, he'll take the hammer right now and break your heart. He'll break your heart. He'll break it off your life. He'll, listen, if anybody should be living in a rubber room right now, bouncing off the walls, you should be Rafferty. That's right. I didn't have a biological father in my life that was raising me until I was 10 years old. I've lost two kids in my life. I ain't even talking like this anymore. But if anybody should be in a rubber room bouncing off the walls, it should be your pastor. But I come by today to tell you I knew there was something. I had people that were Holy Ghost Spirit filled that walked by me in my life. And I said, God, I know where they come from. I know where they've been. And God, they're not down. They're not down. God, what happened? God says, I took the heavy hammer. I took a hammer and hit them. So I'm just telling you all in Jesus' name. You, and if you're sitting there like, I'm going to talk to that boy. Stony soul. Stony soul. Number three, y'all ready? Getting a little hot in here. Hey, Blake, praise God we got heat. And clap your hands. Stomp your feet. Praise the Lord. We got some heat. Hey. <laughs> y'all are too tight today. Y'all loosen up. Should they shake your neighbor or something? Good gracious. I'd done that when I was young. Daddy would light a cigarette, and I'd say, Oh, Mama, clap your hands, praise you, <laughs> stomp your feet, praise the Lord, we got heat. I'm joking. Thorny hearts. Number three, the thorny hearts. Thorny hearts. These are the people, listen to me, that have divided hearts. They're confused, they're distracted, they got control issues. Here's a big one they're jealous, 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 jealous. Jealous. Jealousy is killing this community. Churches are dying by the wayside because why? They got too much jealousy in them. I'm going to make this public today. I want every church that is preaching Jesus Christ to be more than a survivor. I want them to thrive in Jesus Christ's name. I'm for Campbellsville Baptist Church. I'm for the Pentecostal churches. I'm for the churches that preach Jesus and Jesus alone. Jealousy will make you have a thorny heart. You'll become a troublemaker. You'll have a mean spirit on you. You'll have a cruel spirit on you. You'll have a judgmental spirit on you. And lastly, what God gave me was you'll have the spirit of Jezebel on you. And I'm not going to dig into this one a lot. But the spirit of Jezebel normally hangs out in dark places. The spirit of Jezebel causes trouble. Watch this. Wherever you see, hallelujah, this, God just gave this to me. Y'all remember Elijah in the Bible who, who was doing miracle after miracle and miracle? Elisha doing miracle after miracle, all this stuff. Here's what happened. Anytime, oh my God, I feel this one, Bobby. And I, I'm telling you, God gave me this one. Anytime you see the activity of Jesus working through the Holy Spirit, watch out, Jezebel's not too far behind. Anytime you see a healing service take place, watch out, Jezebel's not too far behind. Anytime you see people getting saved and the baptistry staying filled up and life's being transformed and renewed and living an inside-out life, watch out, Jezebel's not too far behind. See, I'm telling y'all, listen to me. People like this normally live in a dark place. They're one way in public, but they're another way at home. Yeah, they're not meek, they're not teachable, and they're always trying to stop the Spirit of God. And listen to me very carefully, I must tell you something, a testimony that literally happened at this church. About a month ago, I was out in the atrium, I was talking to a young lady and her husband, and here, I, I, she had so much anger, so much unforgiveness. I'm talking about bad. I'm talking about one of the worst cases I have seen in a long time. Nothing would come out of her mouth but trouble. And she's right out there in our atrium. And so finally, I looked at her, and this is what I told her. I said, Mark chapter 11 says, if you've got unforgiveness in your heart, that God will not even hear your prayers. Here was her response, Greg. Oh, well. Oh, 
Oh, well. Jenna, I can't comprehend that. Because I know what kind of relationship I have with Jesus. And it burns me. This is crazy. That we got Christians living a thorny life. Trouble and Jezebel. They don't feel God. They don't experience God. And God's not hearing their prayers because they got so much hate in their heart. And then you got a Christian who sits in church every Sunday. Oh, well. Oh, well, whatever. Oh, well. And here's what tore me up. I said, you realize what you just said, right? Oh, yeah. I said, does that not bother you one bit that you don't have an active, good, healthy, solid relationship with Jesus Christ? No. Church, what are we doing? What are we doing? That we can walk in church with a thorny heart? It's like you pack, not packing a bag of seeds, but it's like you packing a bag of thorns, and everywhere you go, you just throw thorns, and you just throw thorns, and you just throw thorns. Thorns, thorns. Oh, wherever it lands, I hope it hurts Courtney. Boy, Dylan, you deserve that one. Jen, who you think you are? Instead of throwing seeds, we're throwing thorns. I want to preach. So since it'll preach, let me preach. Until we start being seed sowers. Until we can receive, listen to me, receive the word of God. It's going to lie dormant. It's going to lie dormant. And I'm going to ask you this morning, are you a seed thrower or are you a thorn sower? Where are you at right now with Jesus Christ? Are you the type of Christian that you said a prayer once in your life? You're in church today, but you've got hatred in your life and jealousy in your life and the spirit of Jezebel in your life? Oh, well. I am begging you. I am begging me. Don't leave this sanctuary until God becomes the heartbeat of your life. Until you come telling you, you've got to breathe him in and exhale him out. I'm talking about you finally come to the conclusion in your life, you can't even walk without him holding your hand. Nothing is going to happen in your life until you let go and let God let loose and throw the seeds on the ground on the soil. You know the amazing thing was, here's I heard Dr. Adrian Rogers this morning. I was getting ready to come to church. And uh, Dr. Adrian Rogers, who he's been with the Lord now for a long time, he preached really well today. I think he's preaching better dead than he was alive. Crazy. Dr. Rogers said, it's like this. What if we had two fields? Two fields, same soil, both of them's got soil. But what if you had a fence between the two grounds, two property grounds? They got the same sun. They got the same wind. They got the same air. They got the same rain. They, everything was the same. Both fields are the same. They just got a fence in between them. But one ground had a harvest. But the field right beside them lost everything that they had. Two fields, same soil, same rain, same wind, same sun. But one of them has a harvest. And one of them don't. Can I tell you that's where the churches are at today? It just seems like anymore you got a fence down, down in churches. Some of them's getting it, some of them's not. Got the same Holy Spirit. Come on. He carries a hammer. <laughs> he can break up anything in your life right now. How come that's happening? And I know a lot of churches don't like preaching like this. But it's true preaching. Because the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. <laughs> against principalities, against powers and rulers of the darkness of this age. Against spiritual hosts of weakness in heavenly places. But in other words, everybody packed some kind of a spirit in with you this morning. You sure did. You sure did. You, you, whether you admit this or not. Everybody packs some kind of a spirit in this morning. That's why sometimes it takes 40 minutes to get into the presence of God. That's right. Boy, they sing a lot out there. You're going to have a problem in heaven because that's all we're going to do. 
My question to you this morning before I get to my last point is this. What spirit are you feeding? Are you packing a bag of thorns? Or are you packing a bag of seeds? Men, men of God, are you packing seeds in your marriage? Women, women of God, are you packing seeds in your marriage? Or you got a bag of thorns? What about church? What about church? Are you packing seeds or are you packing thorns? In Jesus' name, I, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I've read the Bible. I know what it says that in the last days, we're going to see an outpouring of the Holy Ghost like never before. We got to be seed sowers. We got to be seed sowers. We got to sow seeds. Everybody say, sow seeds. Yeah, the last one is this. It's the heart of God. The heart of God. I love this. And I'm going to say something that I heard Dr. Billy Graham say one time, so I did not come up with this doc did. He says, if you, have, if you do not have a harvest in your life, you've got the other one of the three hearts. Ugh. Come on, Christians. If you don't have a harvest, if you're not having an increase in your personal walk with God, he says, you've got one of the other three hearts. That's, I'm telling you all, that's Dr. Billy Graham. That's powerful. The heart of God. Hallelujah. Listen to this. I love this one. God, I, I receive, I want more of this one. These are the people who are after the heart of God. Sometimes I text some of you guys and I put hashtag God chaser. God chasers. The good, the good heart, the heart of God are God chasers. A good heart always. Listen to me, always. Everybody say always. Listen, it always produces a harvest. Listen to me, a good heart, the heart of God, always produces a harvest. And God gets so personal. Listen to what he says. Y'all with me say amen. I'm almost done, I promise. It's only 1140. God says this, some of y'all are producing a 30. Some of y'all are producing a 60. And some of y'all are producing a 100. But a good heart, a good man of God, a good woman of God always has a harvest. Don't tell me you don't feel it. Because at church, here's, the, here's, the, here's, the, uh, here's what you get, whatever you put in. Y'all ready for Christianity? Here it is, here it is. Whatever you put in is what you're going to get out. That's right. If all I want to do is be a preacher, I've achieved it. Y'all think about that. Did God just create me to be a preacher? No. There's more. Elena, God just didn't create you to be a mama. You're a good one. But he created you for more. Vince Nolly, he did not just create you to be on the security team here at El Corn Baptist Church. He gave you a bag of seeds. He gave you not just one seed, he gave us a bag of seeds. Y'all got me this morning? And ever what you do with your seeds, don't blame it on the preacher. Don't blame it on the deacons. Don't blame it on God. Whatever you do with your bag of seeds is going to determine your outcome of your harvest. You let, a, you, you let a farmer get out there and say, boy, that field's beautiful. Boy, God, I'm believing that tobacco is just going to grow. Now, can that happen? Yeah. I've never seen it. They got to get on the tractor. I, I'm, 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 I got Alan Dudgeon as a neighbor, so I know what I'm talking about. They got to get on a tractor. In the good days, hard days, bad days, hot days, they get on a tractor. They plow the ground. They plant the seeds. And guess what? Ever how the soil is is going to determine the harvest. Same way with the Christian's life. Listen to me. You've got as much of Jesus as you want. Don't be hating on somebody who ain't doing nothing. God, Satan's got them. But y'all want to see some jealousy go around really quick? You let somebody get the hundred harvest. You let somebody get the hundredfold. 
And boy, you'll see churches, you'll see people going crazy, and they'll try to, they'll try to think about their past, what they've done back here. Listen to me very carefully. In Jesus' name, in Jesus Christ's name of Nazareth, I'm speaking in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, a hundred Fold ministry at Elkhorn Baptist Church. Where the gifts are staring up. Come on. Where the gifts are staring up. You're sitting there right now and you say, I don't understand it. You've got a seed in you. But you've got to want it. You've got to want it. You know what most people want? I'm just going to be honest. Everybody say, oh, no. Most people want to sit back and not do anything and ride in on somebody else's anointing. <laughs> Listen, my father-in-law, he, he wigs me out sometimes. I'm not going to lie, he just wigs me out sometimes. Anybody lay your hands on your daughter-in-law and say it's going to be the third week of August, she's going to have a baby, and then she gets pregnant the third week? Oh, come on! I'm, I, I, whatever. Y'all just sitting there like, why don't you believe it, preacher? Where's your faith? Where's yours? I'm just telling y'all. But I've told y'all this a many a times. I made my mind up when I walk into church, I got to bring my praise. I got to bring my bag of seeds. Somebody is watching, watch this, how you worship. Somebody's watching how you walk. Somebody's watching how you talk. Somebody's watching every move you make. Destiny tells me all the time, Dave, why'd you do that? I'm like, did you see that? She says, watch every move you make. Every move you make, people who have the heart of God humble themselves. Y'all hear me? And God's working on me on this one. God, humble me. <laughs> they have a soft, they're soft-hearted. You got to watch these people because most people will take advantage of these type of people too. They get really soft-hearted and tender-hearted, and then person will abuse the system if you're not careful. Watch this. Listen to me. They're merciful. They're teachable. They're meek. They're loving, they're caring. They're, and I, I wrote this down. They're sensitive to the Holy Spirit. In other words, y'all ready? Y'all ready for a test? What is God speaking to you through the Holy Spirit right now? Right now, right now. What, listen to me. What is God saying right now? Listen, whatever he's saying, write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Listen, if you don't take notes, take notes. Because I'm telling you, Michelle, what is God speaking to you right now? It may be about your mama. It may be about your, your new steps of life. I don't know. Maybe about your girl's grandchildren. I don't know. Whatever you feel. First thing, first thing, watch this. First thing comes to your spirit, your heart. Write it down. That's God speaking. And here's what we do. We start thinking, well, why would God say that? Why would God tell me to do this? Why would he tell Peter to get out of a boat and walk on water? Because he can Jimmy, that preach is really good. God will give you things that you can do. Well, listen to me very carefully. What God is speaking right now, write it down. Here's what the Bible says. Let me tell you what God, praise team, you guys come. Let me tell you what the heart of God produces. Y'all ready? If you got the heart of God, I said this last week and I'm going to say it again. If you've got the heart of God, y'all ready? Everybody say, I got you, preacher. Come on back, y'all can participate too. Everybody say, I got you, preacher. If you've got the heart of God, here's what you're going to be producing. Galatians 5.22. I said it last week, and I'm going to say it again. If you've got the heart of God, here's what's going to be coming out. The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In other words, when you really want to blow up on somebody, you won't blow up on them. Because why? Greater he is in me than he is in the world. How many of y'all know, how many of y'all have ever really wanted to do something all of a sudden the Holy Spirit just stops you? Stops you. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. When you get love and peace and joy and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control, you get all these fruits. You know what that means? You got the heart of God. You got the heart of God. Watch this. You got to quit justifying your lifestyle. In other words, if you can't be mean spirit and say this. Y'all ready? I hear Kentucky people say this all the time. Well, that's just the way I am. No, 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 no. Well, I'm a northerner. I don't care if you're a southerner. I'm telling you, if you've got the heart of God, this is what you'll have in your heart. Y'all got it? Somebody say amen. And see, listen to me. The seed was the same in every place. 
Y'all got me? The seed was the same in every place. Here it is. Y'all ready? But the condition of the soul, the condition of the heart was different. Y'all got me? The, the seed's the same. The Word of God, hallelujah, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. God, I still believe in signs, wonders, and miracles. I still believe that blinded eyes can come open. I'm going after them, God. And I shall have a harvest in my life. So listen to me. The, the, the seed's the same. My question to you this morning is, y'all ready? How's your soul? How's your heart? Are you a wayside Christian? Are you a stony Christian? Are you a thorny Christian? Or do you have the heart of God? I pray y'all chew on this. I really do. I pray y'all go home and get your notes back out or go to Mark chapter 4 and read this. Because I believe that God is going to use everybody in this house of worship to become a seed sower. Brian, I, I can't talk like you talk. Watch this. All you got to do is share your testimony. Y'all know, know the best testimony ever? Let's get this out of the way. The ones who's never smoked dope. The ones who were a good child being raised up in the house of worship. See, our mindset is, Greg, well, I've never done drugs, alcohol. I've never done all the bad stuff. Brian, I don't have a testimony. Let me tell y'all a good testimony. His name's Caden Wheatley. That's a good testimony. He's pure. He saved himself. He's still saving himself. He don't smoke dope or do alcohol. I'm proud of you. That's a testimony. That's a testimony. You know the greatest testimony I see was that beautiful bride wearing that white dress walking down the aisle. And she's a virgin and she's never been with a man. She's never, she saved herself. That's a testimony. See, we think we got to be bad to have a testimony. God didn't create us to be bad. God created us to have His heart. You know if you've done wrong to somebody. It don't take a pastor standing over on a stage. You know. Watch this, man of God. You know you feel out, out of the way. I had a man call me about two months ago. He said, Brian, I'm going to have to quit going to the bars. I, ne I never once fussed. I never once said anything bad. I love this man of God. And I said, tell me something. Why, why, why do you got to quit? Because I like asking questions. Here's what he said. I just felt weird. <laughs> Man, something just, Brian, I was sitting there, and I, did, I felt out of place. I just sat there and listened to him. My heart started beating really fast. And I got up and I walked out. And I made God a promise. God, I don't want to ever go back to that. That's a testimony. See, guys, listen to me. You don't have to do something bad to have a testimony. God says, I put my Holy Spirit in you. You don't have to go down that road. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. We don't have to go down a dirty road. We don't have to go down a road that everybody else is packed. We don't have to be a wayside Christian. I proclaim today that the heart of God will be on every one of you right now in Jesus' name. The heart of God. Come on, church. The heart of God. You may have done things wrong in your life. You may have said things you shouldn't have said. But all my hope, all my hope, I'm going to switch y'all up. Y'all ready? Go back to that. Go back to that. All my hope 
Some of you feel hopeless right now. You feel, Brian, I am that wayside Christian. It's my way or the highway. I've got control and issues. Brian, I may be that, that stony ground Christian. My heart is so hard right now. I want to hear, but I can't hear. You may be the thorny Christian. Instead of throwing seeds, you got, you got thorns. Throwing thorns, thorns. But my prayer is that we'll all have the heart of God. Y'all receive that today? Y'all raise your hands. Come on. Come on, raise your hands. Father God, every hand that is raised. I pray, God, that we'd realize that our hope is only in you. That, God, we would have your heart. So, God, if you've got to have an open heart transplant right now, God, do it in Jesus' name. Whatever you want, God, it's what we want. We want the heart of God in Jesus' name. Amen. The heart of God. Do you have the heart of God? This altar's open. Y'all stand. This altar's open. Y'all come on. I don't know where you're at. You may be a wayside. You may have fallen by the wayside. You may have a stony heart. Or you may be here today throwing, throwing thorns and not seeds. But I got news for you. Y'all ready? God's in the house. He's a deliverer. He's ready to save you. Come on. He's ready to forgive you. He's ready to cleanse you and stand you up and make you walk in the newness of God. Amen. This altar's open. All my hope is in God. Amen. Y'all enjoy this. This altar's open. Husbands, you may want to grab your wine. Come on, this altar, Jesus.